Hey guys, welcome back. It's Chris Bircher. This is Knowledge Plus Experience Equals Wisdom, episode 135. The title of today's episode, Winning at Life by Walking the Talk. Well, what's all this about? All right, so one of the things... My, my dad didn't teach me a whole lot. Maybe he taught by example, but he didn't ever sit me down and sort of tell me about the birds and the bees or how to balance a checkbook. But he did tell me maybe a handful of these, like, what I call dadisms or truisms that I didn't want to hear at the time. But, you know, later in life, I realized he was speaking a lot of truth. And one of these things was you got to walk the talk and sort of, you know, I don't even remember the context of what he was telling me, but I guess I kind of wanted to be a, a peaceful, you know, broke dirtbag hippie. And, you know, I think he was saying, if that's the value system that you want to align yourself with, then executing that in the real world is going to be more difficult than you think. And so if you're going to talk that way, then you got to walk that way. Wh- whatever that was, you know, if I, you have to demonstrate the things that you say through your actions, right? You got to walk the talk. Um, and this always bugged me, but as I, as I age, right, you know, I sort of see how this works. And uh, I wanted to break this down in this episode because I think and as much as I've learned a lot about this throughout my life, I'm really starting to focus on the meaning of this right now. And so I want to break that down into the talk and the, and the walk, and where this is coming from is I find myself, the more I explore Marshall Rosenberg's nonviolent communication and, you know, Paul Godola's, which I have right here, Integrity and Peace book, you know, the alignment of your values with your actions in the world is integrity. And I'm sort of obsessed with making those things line up. And I really think the the juxtaposition of those things creates dissonance in our lives, right? And so when we are not behaving in the world in a way that we believe in, or when our beliefs and the things that we find truth in do not exemplify themselves in our person, our behavior, and the way we interact with the world, then that, that, you know, we're not happy. We're not satisfied with ourselves, and we long to be better. And so I think a lot of both our individual problems, you know, like anxiety and depression and having bad relationships and not getting along at work and being generally dissatisfied with life, as well as our sort of community level and government level or level organizations or conflicts in countries and, you know, conflicts in general come from this dissonance that we experience initially within ourselves, but also, um, and that also influences our interactions with other people. So really, I think the the alignment of your values and your behavior are the secret. And that, you know, that's the end of the episode, right? <laughs> and that's basically what Paul Godola says in his book, that integrity is, you know, living the life that you want and, and matching your behavior up with your beliefs. So that talk part is, is like having a plan. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you know, you might say when you graduate college or high school, you want to go to college, become a doctor and make a lot of money and help people. That's your talk, right? And so your walk then in that very narrow uh, (laughs) myopic (laughs) case that acts as if the world is only this one thing uh, would be to go to college, get good grades, become a doctor, help people make a lot of money. You know, you're walking your talk. Those things matched up with that respect uh, element, whatever part of your life, you have achieved integrity. Now, of course, we know there's all those other things. And I'm not really talking about saying, I want a cheeseburger for lunch. And then you go and you order a cheeseburger and you eat a cheeseburger. You know, that's, that might be in, in integrated and uh, considered to be integrity or like nurturing yourself. But it's not really what I'm getting at. You know, what I'm getting at is bigger. Now, so the second part of that would be the walk, the execution, you know, can you actually achieve the goals? Did you order the cheeseburger? Did you change your mind? Did you become a doctor? And again, we'll develop more, more sophisticated and complex ideas here in a minute, but that's sort of the gist of it. So there's two parts. The, the preconceived idea, right? The future prediction, the saying what you're going to do, and then the doing. Um, but really what I'm getting at here is 
This is words. Well, and, and sort of ma- making those things match can be referred to integrity, like Paul uses. I like that word. You're integrating your beliefs, your values, your feelings, and your needs with the things that you do in the world. Um, alignment, you know, of these things or uh, agreement, simple, you know, you're agreeing with yourself. Now, there was a seminal stream ecology paper from my experience where I think the author's last name was Frizzell. It looked at ecosystems as filters, and there were these different elements to an ecosystem that everything had to pass through. And maybe that's a terrible example to use here because I'm not going to go into more detail. But I do think part of this is knowing, probably at the very core of this, is knowing what your values and your needs, your feelings, your emotional your personality, your beliefs, all of these things, you have to sort of take that, what I've called in the past, the personal inventory. You have to know thyself. You have to put in the work through things like a journaling, meditation, exercise, and regular diet. Find yourself. Know that. And that creates your baseline. That creates the talk. That is the story of who you are. And then that also becomes a mechanism that you can use to compare the way you're walking through the world, you know, uh, with that template, just like that. That's what I was trying to refer to that Frizzell paper. Um, if you know what the background conditions are quote unquote supposed to be, or what a healthy ecosystem looks like, then all you have to do whenever you encounter a person in traffic or somebody, when you're ordering at the drive through, you're getting a cup of coffee or you have a problem at work or your spouse reacts a certain way to you coming home late, you have this subset of the world that you have studied and developed based on who you are to compare things to and to t- sort of use to choose how you want to react, right? And this is where, this is the interface where all this break, the walking the talk breaks down. And this is a good example of something that happened in my life recently when I was having a discussion with my wife about, um, I was trying to, she was talking about how much work she had to do this week between working 60 hours and getting all this stuff done before we prepare for our family vacation, right? And I was like, well, I can do some of those things off of your list and free you up. I don't understand why that's not a thing. And we sort of got into an argument about her trying to do it all and me not knowing that I could do these things and they wouldn't have even shown up on her list. You know, if I was the kind of husband that was more proactive I would get in and do these things so that she wouldn't have to put them on her list and have to stress out. And my initial reaction to that sort of was, was to be defensive, but that's not who I want to be. That doesn't agree with my, my updated current value systems of being an empathetic listener and wanting to get both of our needs met. You know, I immediately started to focus on myself and my needs and to sort of think like, Oh, you're calling me names. You're being, you know, a terrible person. Right. And that's not how I wanted to react. But the cool thing about all this is where I am in my sort of personal growth right now is while I was sort of initiating my old system of turning it around and putting it back on her so that I didn't have to experience the pain because I have a need, you know, to to feel peaceful and calm, um, I saw it happening. And even though I couldn't do anything about it in the moment, I was able to see it. And I think what happens most of the time is we have these old habits, we have these old beliefs, all these things I've talked about in the past, these old behavioral modes that we do that just sort of happen so quickly that it's almost automatic. We experience an environmental stimulus, an argument with our spouse, and we insert these old behavior patterns. And, you know, then we feel bad. Maybe we yell or we act out or we stomp our feet or we leave uh, and we don't end up, you know, with a, with a adequate, good feeling solution to the problem. And then we sort of feel like, well, we're wrong. This is why we don't know. We don't have the template. We don't have the, uh, we just, all we do is we behave automatically because we've never really checked in and figured out, does this is how I want to act? Or would I rather act in a way that, you know, something like is cooperative and collaborative and gets both our needs met? I mean, aren't we in a family? In my argument, my sort of take on this whole thing is why don't we come at this in a collaborative way anyway? And at the global scale, it's because for most of our lives, we weren't married to each other. (laughs) We developed our own 
individual ways of navigating the world that we still sort of impose because we haven't done the work. Um, and so another, another sort of bunch of information that goes into this is your talk is it entirely driven by our you know needs, our beliefs, our values, and our emotions. And if we don't know what these things are and we don't have control over these, if they're just happening in our life spontaneously according to some indoctrinated belief system and behavior system that we developed while we were kids that we've been implementing since then, then that's what's going to keep happening. And I think most of us have it can think of one or many examples in our lives where we do things and we don't understand why. And we sort of beat ourselves up and or we wonder after the fact and go, why did that happen again? Why does this keep happening? I decided I wanted to get fit. I went jogging three times last week and then four weeks went by and I didn't do anything. And I ate a bag of Doritos every night. You know, why does that, why do I keep doing that? That's the same thing I always do. It's because you haven't done this work. you got to do the talk work. You really have to go in. And, and that's where nonviolent communication is like the, the most brilliant tool, Marshall Rosenberg, that I've found recently because he describes a way to get, in, you know, to get in touch with things like what we're feeling and what's important to us and what our needs are and then you know, what our values are. And now we have this filter system. If you can come up with a list of five values and then related needs, everything you do in your life has to pass through that filter. And if it doesn't, then it's something that you don't need. And if you're reacting negatively to something that your wife says or in a convers- having a conversation not go the way that you wanted it, then that's not passing through the filter. You're not walking the talk. Uh, and so more, more generally also, or more specifically, the walk is things like habits and behaviors. Most of these things we learned when we were kids. We didn't have a whole lot of choice about it. Most of them were reacting to mild or severe trauma. And we implemented behaviors that we thought made sense at the time and got us out of whatever negative situation we were in. We decided those were pretty good. The next time something bad happens, we do the same thing and those things get reinforced. And all of a sudden you've developed a terrible habit. You know, I mean, a severe example is I started smoking pot because it distracted me from the emotional neglect that I was feeling at home and the loneliness. You know, not only did it make me feel silly and, you know, good, it also brought me together with other people that were kind of in the same boat and also wanted to share in that experience. Not the most healthy way to do it, but it's something that I did. We do other things like uh, we become people pleasers. You know, we become exceptionally arrogant. We you know, do we do healthier things like become really good athletes, but maybe we get a little bit of a tunnel vision and we focus too much on ourselves and then we become arrogant. You know, there's lots of different things that happen that we don't choose. We didn't consent to, we didn't think about. And we're walking around today implementing those same behaviors based on those same belief systems that maybe we actually don't really like. (laughs) And again, that disagreement creates a dissonance. And the solution to that is to, you know, figure out what your talk is so that you can figure out what your walk is. If this is really, you know, I'm getting much closer to the recipe for life, something that I can sort of lay out in very basic terms and help my kids with, you know, help my wife and I's relationship get better, help my aging parents sort of deal with the fact that they're nearing death, Um, you know, not doing this work because we're not taught it, we're not aware of it, is a is a is um leads to a a life, you know that in my opinion isn't worth living, um in, in a way I, I I or you know as uh, Plato or Socrates said sort of the unexamined life is not worth living. This is a way of examining your life that has a very <laughs> extremely positive outcome. In the last, you know I've been I've put in fifteen years worth of work. But it's been very accelerated recently by this work by Marshall Rosenberg in Nonviolent Communication that describes the series of events that says unmet needs create this dissonance. And if we don't even know what those are, we have no hope. And one of the ways that we can meet those needs is by trying to understand other people's needs and then entering interactions with the world as you know, the motivation being a way that we can both address these unmet needs and potentially meet them. Now, of course, you have to do this for yourself first, and you have to do things like the personal inventory. So if I can maybe attempt to sort of 
repeat that and then and then sum it up again in a repetitive and redundant way, you know, I think it's going to be helpful. So, you know, walking the talk is a, another way of saying living in integrity. And integrity with what? So that your actions match your value systems. And your value system is designed to meet your needs and to, to help meet the needs of people that are important to you. And generally, the other people that live in this world toward a peaceful and calm um, uh, uh, experience uh, in this life. Now, that may not be your global value, but I, th- or I think it is a global value. It may not be yours. But the first step is figuring out just what the hell those things are. What do you even need? You know, if you do, do, do the, the, the way this started with me is trying to identify your feelings. So in that argument with my wife, and, and when you're in a similar situation, somebody cuts you off in traffic, you didn't get the right toppings on your pizza when you ordered it, your boss is being an asshole, you know, what are you feeling in that moment? I bet, I, I will bet you 500 bucks. You don't know. And what I learned in this is most of the things that I thought I was feeling aren't actually emotions. And I, it's hard to believe that, again, after 15 years and being alive for 51, I really didn't even know what I was feeling anytime, you know, unless it was obvious, like anger or grief. You know, there are some times where things are so severe, but it's on a general basis. And so if you don't know what's happening in your body psychologically, what the hell a chance do you have at helping to manifest a positive outcome? You're at the mercy of your monkey mind and your interactions with the world. And that, again, I don't want to live like that. And so once you start trying to identify your feelings, and I have this stack of papers right here, you know, feelings inventory, you know, feelings that you have when your needs are being met, universal human needs. <laughs> I think I will bet you money you can't do it. And then when you start to look at these things, you'll be like, holy crap, I I am such an amateur human being. But there are, you know, the good news is there it's pretty easy. You know, you just start doing practicing this on a regular basis and you can start to identify what your feelings are. And the beautiful thing about that is behind your feelings is an unmet need. Well, Marshall Rosenberg says that most of the interactions uh, among humans is either um is a tragic cry call for an, uh, an unmet need that's unmet. And he says the only two words humans ever say are please and thank you. And Paul Godola will say every act is either an act of love or a call for love. And it really does boil down to, are you getting, do, what is it that you need that you're not getting? And how does this stack up against your value? So it's sort of like values are what's important to you. Needs are things that you need to make sure that you can uh, live a life that meets those values. And then feelings are things that you're experiencing when there's something not either, either not right when, you know, there, there are sort of unpleasant feelings when needs aren't getting met. And then there are pleasant feelings when needs are being met. And (laughs) don't all of us kind of want to live more pleasant. And again, I think we do this practice as individuals and it allows us to have more positive interactions. It allows us to a walk the talk, And then we can have better experiences for ourselves in a selfish individual kind of way. And then we can have better interactions with our fellow humans and help them learn how to do this. Because I think this ought to be being human 101, you know, the ultimate course that all people should understand how to do. Um, Identify your values, feelings, and needs, and then come up with a system that allows you to live in integrity. As you interact with other people, now that escalates to your family, your community, your village, your state, your government, your country, your civilization, right? And, and it makes sense to me that if we can't do this as individuals, if we don't understand what's happening, why we have dissonance, why we walk away from conversations, not understanding what transpired or whether our needs matter, what the hell even just went on. How the hell are we going to do that as a country or as a globe? How are we going to solve the problems? So, you know, the goal here is we all have individual problems, discomfort, suffering. I'm not saying we can 
make all that go away and live in a perfect utopia, but we sure as hell can do better than we're doing. And I think that's a, a global goal. People can and ought to live more comfortable lives as, you know, with more calm and more integrity. Same thing, and, and, we will, and then therefore we will have less anxiety, less depression, less violence, less misogyny, fewer social justice problems. Uh, and then again, yeah, once we kind of figure that out for ourselves, we have less anxiety and less depression. That scales out to fewer global problems, fewer societal problems, less wars, fewer wars, you know, less violence. Like, doesn't it, it somewhere in there is a magic pill <laughs> that isn't so magic that requires some effort, requires a personal inventory, requires you to figure out what the hell your talk is, and then it requires you to figure out what your walk is, and then it requires everybody to elevate everybody else up to some level where we can do this together, and then that's as close as we're ever going to get to utopia. That is the upstream solution to whatever problem you choose to insert, right? And that's the goal here. Fewer problems. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that's helpful. I hope that forms a nice little template, and I will continue to improve it and because it's really becoming clearer to me that this is a fundamental element of being human. So uh, next time, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in kind of a general sense. But this has been episode 135, Knowledge Plus Experience Equals Wisdom. Winning at life by walking the talk. I'm Chris Bircher. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.